If you're having trouble getting your 808s and your kicks to sit right in the mix and it just sounds like floppy trash or it just it's not getting loud enough, here's a really surgical way to be able to get them to both fit in the mix properly so that you have a cleaner low end and you can manage that low end better and you can get a tighter mix. The entire idea behind side chaining your 808 or your bass to your kick is to make more space. If there's more space, it allows the sound to play more clearly and more fully and there's more impact to it. So when we're side chaining, the kick and the 808. What's happening right now without any sidechain or any processing at all is that this is the kick, right? The kick's coming through, but the bass is also coming through. So they're coming in at the same time and they're hitting the same area. The idea behind sidechaining is that you take the bass and every time the kick comes in, it's triggering this bass to duck down slightly so that the kick can come through clearly before the 808 comes back up. So it's kind of like this, right? We're making room just enough for the kick to come in. But this is a more surgical way to do side chaining because if you side chain the entire bass signal to the kick, every frequency in the spectrum of the bass is going to duck down, which means the highs, the mids, and the lows. And the only space we really want is in the lows because the lows are more temperamental. So we need to make space there. However, if we lose information in the mids and the highs, we're just losing impact. So what we want to do is use a multiband compressor to just sidechain the lows. So now we're only focusing on the lows. So every time the lows of the kicks on the 808 comes in, instead of ducking the entire signal, it's just ducking the low part, right? So the rest of it's still here. The rest of it's still impactful, yet we're making just space enough for the lows. So it's kind of like bloop, bloop. And this is really weird with my hands, but this is the best way to visually see it. And I'm going to show you here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a multiband compressor. In this case, I'm going to be using FabFilter. You don't have to use FabFilter. This is just what I like. And we're going to have our 808 track. So without anything happening, this is what's going on. It sounds okay, but we can make it sound better. We can make it sound more clear. So this is a very surgical, nerdy way to do it. And we can put a multiband compressor onto our bass track. And we're going to sidechain it to our kick so that every time the kick hit comes in, this bass ducks down. As you can see, like the gray part is our bass. The red part is our kick. So you can see there's a lot of clashing in the low end, but you see all this information right here. We want to retain all that. And if we were to just side chain it with just a basic compressor, not a multiband compressor, this is what's happening. I got to hit external. So now it's listening to the kick. And if the entire signal ducks down, we're losing all this information as well. So it creates this pulsing sound that we don't always want. I mean, in certain genres and EDM dance music, we may want that to do as an effect. But in this case, we're just doing it to clean up our mix. So we don't want to do the entire signal because then we're losing a ton of the impact from the bass. The idea here is to find the clashing points. As you can see, a lot of this area right here, when the kick comes in, the bass is also here. So what we want to do is duck the bass every time the kick comes in. So you load up your multiband compressor, you put the multiband compressor on your bass, you side chain it to the kick so that it's listening to the kick. Then we're going to create a band and we're going to hit external in this case because we're not listening to the bass, the internal track itself. We're listening to an external track, which is the kick. Now you can see if we highlight the places where the kick is prominent and we want that transient of the kick to come through, right? So we're looking at about right here. That's the main part of the kick. And if we can get our bass to just duck down real quick, then it's going to make space for that transient. And transients are initial. They're in the front end of a sample. So we want to make sure the attack is quick. And we want it to release quickly because we don't want it to be like ramp up. Like it ducks down and then releases how quickly it ramps back up to its normal volume. So if we have a boom, it takes a long time to ramp up. If we do it a little quicker, it becomes more subtle and it blends in a little bit more. So I'm going to do it real dramatically so we can hear it. Again, if I duck the entire signal, this is what we're listening to. This is what we're losing. But if we just focus on this area. Off. Back on. 
So it's really subtle, but it just makes it that much more clean. It gives it that much more room in the sub and the low end. And you may not be able to hear it if you're listening to it on your phone. You would hear it if you were listening to monitors, and you would especially hear it if you have a sub. It's playing in the club. So this is kind of the thing that we want to make sure is that we're managing the low end so that it's not constantly conflicting with each other. And this is one of those really surgical ways to be able to do it is to use a multiband compressor and just focus on the place where it's really problematic versus compressing the entire thing. Because if you compress the entire thing, like I said, you lose a lot of signal. You hear what's happening? Now, if we cut this back to the lows... Obviously, we don't want it that intense. We just want it a little bit, slightly, to get out of the way. So that's a really, really nerdy... <laughs> surgical way to be able to sidechain your kick and your 808 just to make it fit better in the track just to manage your low end a little bit more and keep things tight so that the transient of the kick comes through and that sub and the low frequencies of the bass just ducks down real quick but giving the kick enough time to come through and then popping back up so hopefully that was helpful if you found this helpful hit subscribe if you want to learn more about music production and you want to learn how to turn it into a business there's a training i'm going to leave in the link it talks about high ticket sales and how to get more artist clients. So I'll see you in the next video. Ooh.